Hey folks, today I'd like to discuss the objectification of women in our hobby, painting sculpted miniatures, particularly of the 3D printed variety as those are the ones I'm more familiar with, but this would apply to any other miniatures as well. Objectification of women is a problem in our society. You see it everywhere, in all media, and in increasing amounts, and it has real world effects on women. We'll start with a Wikipedia definition, followed by a look at objectification theory, a framework for understanding the effects it might have on women, then a 15 year review of literature surrounding objectification theory, and finally we'll take a look at the objectification of women in our hobby. If you need a definition, Wikipedia provides a basic one, or 10. I won't read them all to you. Unfortunately, the papers referenced are behind a paywall, but even reading Wikipedia's summary of the arguments, you can see that there are varying degrees to which objectification could be said to be natural, especially as part of the human mating process. Media is not natural, though. We choose what we put into media. Objectification theory offers a framework for understanding the experiential consequences of being female in a culture that sexually objectifies the female body. This paper, and others that it cites, recognize the quote, socially sanctioned right of all males to sexualize all females, regardless of age or status. This sexualization occurs in many forms, ranging from sexual violence to sexualized evaluation. The most subtle and deniable way sexualized evaluation is enacted, and arguably the most ubiquitous, is through the gaze or visual inspection of the body. When objectified, women are treated as bodies, and in particular, as bodies that exist for the use and pleasure of others. Importantly, because a sexually objectifying gaze is not under a woman's control, few women can completely avoid potentially objectifying contexts in their lives. The paper notes three places where an objectifying gaze is played out. In interpersonal and social encounters, where many studies have found men are more likely to engage in sexualized gazing and are more unwelcome, and often accompany their gaze with evaluative commentary, which is often more derogatory when aimed at women of color. Our language even has two words specifically for looking at the body with the connotation that it, the attention is unwanted, leer and ogle. Sexually objectifying gaze also occurs in visual media depicting social and interpersonal encounters where, once again, men are found to be looking at women much more than the reverse. Perhaps the most insidious, however, is the way in which visual media of all sorts presents the viewer with a sexualizing gaze. Pornography, mainstream film, visual arts, advertisement, television, music videos, women's magazines, sports photography, each with papers cited saying that women's bodies are targeted more often than men. Once again, women of color receive worse treatment, with African American women more likely to be portrayed as animals, and Asian American women more likely to be portrayed as exotic or subservient. Women are also more likely to be portrayed with their body as the focus instead of the face, like men are. It's everywhere. Women and girls are virtually unable to avoid images of bodies like theirs presented in an objectified manner. Girls and women that live in a society that objectifies the female body are pressured to objectify themselves, to treat themselves as objects to be looked at and evaluated. Effective socialization begins with compliance to minimally sufficient external pressures, proceeds through interpersonal identification, and ends with individuals claiming ownership of socialized values and attitudes, often by incorporating them into their senses of self. Physical beauty can translate to power for women. Attractiveness functions as a prime currency for women's social and economic success. Women's attentiveness to their own physical appearance which has often been interpreted as narcissism and vanity, might more appropriately be viewed as women's strategy for helping to determine how others will treat them. This strategy need not be conscious or deliberately chosen. Instead, theories of socialization would predict that with repeated exposure to the array of subtle external pressures to enhance physical beauty, girls and women come to experience their efforts to improve their appearances as freely chosen or even natural. Objectification theory argues that this habit of self-conscious body monitoring can have a profound impact on women's lives. Every person is different, and so is their lived experience. So the extent to which one will internalize the objectified view of women and the extent to which one will self-objectify will inevitably vary across the population. And the contexts of one's life that one enters and exits each day, home, work, commute, etc., offer varying levels of protection against unwanted attention.
Some women feel constantly under threat, while others will only feel it when they get catcalled in the street, for example. The stress involved with constant self-conscious body monitoring can cause women to experience undue shame and anxiety, a lack of focus, and a disconnect with internal bodily states. Shame at not being able to live up to unrealistic standards, and anxiety about always being under threat of sexual evaluation or sexual violence can be a significant mental load. On top of being interrupted when somebody comments on or draws attention to their appearance, self-monitoring can make it difficult to achieve peak motivational states or a state of flow, reducing quality of life. Studies also show that women are less in touch with their internal bodily sensations than men. Objectification theory posits that women may have less perceptual resources available to monitor their inner bodies due to self-monitoring their outer appearances and that dieting and restrained eating may desensitize them to internal bodily cues. The paper goes on to convincingly link these effects to several women's mental health risks, including unipolar depression, sexual dysfunction, and eating disorders. Women experience depression at rates 2 to 1 compared to men. Women also experience more sexual dissatisfaction and dysfunction in heterosexual relationships compared to men including very high levels of difficulty achieving orgasm. Eating disorders are a disproportionately female phenomenon with obvious implications on the body. Written in 1997 is a good paper that lays out a framework for studying the effects of objectification on women in society. A 2012 paper reviewing objectification theory studies, also available online, has found empirical evidence for objectification theory's framework. Self-objectification and self-surveillance are significantly associated with higher rates of body shame, appearance anxiety, less capacity for flow and focus, and less connection with internal bodily sensation. A large body of evidence has demonstrated that self-objectification and self-surveillance directly predict disordered eating attitudes and behaviors, and that these links can be partially or fully explained by body shame and appearance anxiety. There have been fewer studies related to depression, but those few have confirmed that self-objectification and self-surveillance are directly related to depressed moods and that these links are partially explained by body shame, appearance anxiety, and reduced flow. Even less research exists concerning sexual dysfunction related to objectification, but what does suggests that shame and anxiety associated with self-objectification partially predict disrupted sexual functioning in women. In particular, less sexual satisfaction, lower sexual self-esteem, and lower perceived sexual competence. Other studies reviewed have found empirical evidence of other consequences of self-objectification and or surveillance, including more behavioral and psychological support for cosmetic surgery, less intrinsic motivation, poor math performance, diminished cognitive capacity, diminished physical performance, feelings of humiliation and disgust, lower global self-esteem, less interest in physical sex, greater self-harming behavior, higher prevalence of smoking, more dysfunctional exercise attitudes and behavior, greater fear and perceived risk of rape, and greater hostility toward other women. Last month, I made a video exhibiting 100 different 3D printing Patreon campaigns. I had to choose to either skip some entries, show their work and not say anything, or show their work and say something. Not saying anything would have implied approval. Just skipping their work actually would be saying something, but it would be ignoring the problem. So I chose to say something. It didn't come off as the most graceful, but most entries had about 12 seconds to work with, so here I can provide a bit of proper criticism. I found that objectification of women in sculpted minis comes in several forms. One is the so-called pinup, something that has a tradition in the art world. I'll come back to that one. Another is models that are underdressed, especially in inappropriate circumstances. And last is the token female, worse when she's also inappropriately dressed. Including a token female, a single female among male models, wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. At this point, there are far fewer women in our hobby than men, but I would argue that simply including a token female isn't going to do much to bring more women into the hobby and inclusivity should be the core to any hobby. When the only female officer on the force, or soldier in the squad, is sexually objectified like this, it shows disrespect for women in general, 
and perpetuates the objectification problem present in all other forms of media, it is also incredibly disrespectful to women who serve their country and communities. Women are just as capable in any of these situations, and displaying them like this holds women back. Why is she posed for a picture when all the men are prepared for battle? Why is she not dressed for battle when all the men are? The male gaze is why. Next is just underdressed or elaborately naked models. These four pit fighters are wearing comparable garb to their male counterparts. Sure, there's a bit of cleavage and whatnot, but if that's all, I'm probably not going to complain that much. The other four models include an enormous upskirt shot, one only wearing underwear beneath revealing armor, another dressed comparatively to the pit fighters, and one more wearing elaborately nothing. These aren't the worst though. Others put in less effort, and just have mostly naked women with weapons. This also perpetuates the objectification found in all other forms of media, on top of being just super cringeworthy. And finally we come to pinups. Pinups have a long history in the art world, including a certain amount of morale boosting during war times, so they have arguably had some positive effects on society, though they evolved into modern pornography. Even in their time, they were often referred to as cheesecake photos or beefcake photos for male specimens, which leads me to believe that they weren't taken very seriously as an art form. As far as objectification goes, the name pinup refers to the fact that they would be pinned up on the wall so they could more easily be evaluated. The very purpose of objectification is in the name. How does this relate to pinup models? Obviously they can't be pinned up. Perhaps we should call them cheesecake models. But the purpose is the same. They have been sexually objectified for the purpose of being pleasing to look at. Yes, there is a tradition of sexually objectifying women in this way, but why are traditions beyond reproach? You say it's art, I say so what? It has a negative effect on our society, and that is manifested when you sculpt it, print it, and paint it. In the end though, I'm not here to tell you what to sculpt, print, or paint. I'm here to tell you what science says about the effects of objectification of women on our society. It's up to you to decide what to do with that. I want to keep making videos in this space though, and I couldn't do it without addressing these issues. I happen to have a teenage daughter. She likes Supergirl. One time, at a comic shop, there was a far too exquisitely sculpted bust of Supergirl. I got to explain to my 12 year old daughter why she could see Supergirl's nipples. It's ubiquitous, and I'm under no illusion that it's going anywhere anytime soon. But there are more successful mini companies that don't sink to this level than do. I'd love to hear your thoughts and polite criticisms in the comments. Or if you share my feelings, then consider like and subscribing. Next week is the October 3D printing Patreon preview, so if you're a sculptor, get your best picks ready for me, and I'll see you then.